What are your thoughts on supplements such as B12, D, omega-3, and probiotics? Oh my, each one of those is a whole answer in it itself. Is. Maybe we should, yeah. maybe we should do that one day and really yeah. drill down on each of these. Um, of the ones that you mentioned, um, vitamin B12 is the only one that's absolutely essential. And uh, the this is an uh, important vitamin you need it for a healthy brain, for healthy spinal cord, for your blood, nerves, etc. You, you don't want to run short of this stuff. Um, it's made by microbes that live in the soil. Bacteria make it. Animals don't make it. Uh, and when we were living earth-connected lives a million years ago, and we were drinking out of streams, and we would pull up the, the roots and tubers and have, eat them with the soil still clinging on the surface, uh, we had no need for B12 supplements. Uh, there was B12 in the, in the stream water, B12 on the, on the surface of the vegetables. But welcome to the 21st century. Nobody is drinking out of streams. Nobody's eating unwashed vegetables, uh, and which is fine with me. I don't want to be treating cases of cholera and typhoid fever. It's okay to, to add chlorine to the drinking water. But in exchange for sanitation, uh, we've given up our natural B12 sources, and 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 only because of that bargain that we've made with modern life, uh, the natural B12 sources have disappeared from the plant eater's life. And so for that reason, uh, if you're an adult, once a week, twice a week, uh, have something with vitamin B12 in it. It's uh, very cheap now. They, they grow the, the B12 producing organisms in big vats and they just extract the B12 and put it into supplements. And once or twice a week, put a, a little tablet under your tongue or take a squirt of the liquid. Uh, that provides between 500 to 1,000 micrograms twice a week. You don't need to take it every day. Don't take B12 every day. A couple times a week uh, should, should be more than adequate. So uh, that's the one that everybody absolutely needs if you're completely plant-based. Uh, that said, our vitamin D uh, is really a, a hormone that our body makes when sunlight falls on our skin. Uh, and when, again, a million years ago, we were all naked in the African sun, nobody needed vitamin D supplements. I mean, we had no problem making it from our skin. Our, we got lots of skin cancers probably, and our skin looks like old suitcases by age 40, but at least we didn't have vitamin D deficiency. But again, now, welcome to the 21st century. We spend very little time out in the sunlight blasting our skin when we hide from the sun now. We wear hats and sunscreen. And, and, and for that reason, again, because of modern life, we spend so little time out in the sun. Um, and we're, we're learning now that low vitamin D levels are not good. It, it, it lowers your immunity. It, uh, wounds don't heal as well. It's, you want, want to keep your vitamin D level up to above 30 nanograms per ml. Uh, and so you get a blood test, but you can just start taking uh, about 2,000 international units of vitamin D. It's now from vegan sources they, they're making it. Uh, and that should cover the majority of folks. Some people say more, but uh, I take 2,000 international units of vitamin D on most days. Um, and I spend as much time out in the sun as I can. It, it comes out to a walk or a bike ride for half an hour in the mornings. And uh, my vitamin D levels are in the 40s, which is just fine. So um, B12 and D are, are two that you really got a peace of mind to. Uh, probiotics, nobody should uh, need probiotics unless you've just taken a course of antibiotics. If you've just done five days of Cipro for a, a chest infection, you probably should for a few weeks be on, on a good probiotic. But, um, but for general uh, well-being, uh, it's the food uh, that is so important. <clears throat> and it's not theoretical. The good microbes are already down in your gut. You don't need to take them out of a the bowel. They're already there. Um, it's the food that we're eating determines which microbes flourish and which ones recede. <clears throat> uh, I look at the food stream like the conductor of, an, of a symphony orchestra and where he'll, he'll bring up the woodwinds and tone down the brass there. Uh, well, our food does that. If you eat a bunch of sugars and refined carbohydrates, you're going to bring up um, bacteroidetes and some not so friendly organisms, uh, yeast, etc. Um, if you, uh, uh, but if you're eating a whole food, high fiber diet, then up come the formicides microbes and, and some of the pathogenic microbes uh, start to recede. Um, it's the food is so much more important than probiotics here. So again, 
Uh, you want you want those plant fibers, uh, the, especially the soft fibers that absorb water, oats and rice and uh, pastas, etc. Uh, they uh, and legumes, uh, beans, etc. Have resistant starches. Oh, the microbes in your colon really love that kind of fiber. So another reason to start your morning off with that bowl of oatmeal and uh, um, salads, which everybody should be eating, like. Dr. Furman says the salad is the main dish. He's right on that one. But this, a big salad is a great vehicle for some of this, these soft fiber foods. Uh, never hesitate to, uh, to make a big salad for yourself. And then open up a can of black beans or kidney beans and throw them onto the salad. Uh, uh, or throw that, that quinoa that's sitting in the fridge from last, last night's dinner. Throw it onto the salad. Um, the, uh, salads can be great vehicles for getting some of this soft fiber in that, because they got plenty of hard fiber in, in the lettuce. Uh, but to get the soft fiber in, oh man, you're doing wonderful things for your microbiome uh, when you, uh, and, and you'll need a lot less, uh, have a lot less need for uh, bottles of probiotic bacteria. Feed your own is by far the best thing to do for that. Uh, and, um, Zinc is an important mineral, and that's often included in multivitamins for good reason. Um, there's a lot of zinc in meat, but if you're not eating animal muscles, where you get your zinc? It's in root vegetables, it's in legumes. Another reason to have those, the beans and the peas and the chickpeas and the hummus sandwiches. Um, but root vegetables take up zinc, so carrots and uh, beets, uh, etc., are really, really good to include as well. Whole grains have zinc as well. Uh, another reason not to consume white flour because they mill away uh, the zinc and most everything else. Right? And so the last one, all right, we talked about B12, uh, vitamin D, uh, zinc. Um, iodine is important for your thyroid gland. Uh, again, people, it's in fish, but if you're not eating fish, where do you get your iodine? It's in the soil. And the organic farmers, they plow seaweed back into the soil, really, really nourish it, lots of iodine and the vegetables grown from that soil. Nowadays in industrial farming, they just add the uh, NPK fertilizer, the nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium fertilizer, and uh, they don't add much iodine to the soil. Um, so um, so you, you want to not neglect this. So where to get the iodine? A couple of sources. Uh, you can buy, uh, at the health food store, you can buy sea vegetables, healthy seaweeds. Um, the three that are the best would be wakame, the green stuff at the Japanese restaurants in the cell there, um, arame, the darker black, black uh, side, uh, and dulse, the larger purpley leaves. And you soak them uh, for, for, an hour, for half an hour, an hour, and then throw a gob into your soup, throw a gob of it onto your salad there. And three times a week, if you have some sea vegetables, that will meet your iodine needs. Uh, the second is a pinch of iodized salt right on your, on your table. You say, oh, I don't even want to use salt. Yeah, that's the one place you got control of the salt, and a pinch is not going to hurt anybody. Now, the problem is, is the spaghetti sauce at the Italian restaurant. The salt's already in there. You can't do anything about it. The problem is at the, at what they stir fry at the, the veggies in the Chinese restaurant. And that's where the salt comes from, and you have no control. But at the table, if you haven't cooked with it, a pinch, an eighth of a teaspoon onto the surface of your veggies of iodized salt uh, will meet your iodine need as well. Uh, and uh, so the sea vegetables, iodized salt, um, or if you take a multivitamin these days, and there are low potency uh, multivitamins, uh, it should have around 150, 200 micrograms of iodine in there as well. And many people are taking their veggie vitamins and getting their iodine that way. So um, those are the, the four main ones to cover. The whole DHA, uh, omega-3, that's a other topic in itself, but I really urge everybody, whether or not you take uh, supplemental DHA, uh, there's a long chain omega-3 fatty acid that you need for skin oils in your brain. Um, at least, um, I was, uh, I'll bring it next time, but in our refrigerator, we've got a jar of ground up uh, flax seeds, hemp seeds, and chia seeds. And it's a lovely, nutty tasting mixture. And I put a couple of tablespoons of that. And I just added on to a salad. I had on this morning's oatmeal. Uh, you know, have a, two, three tablespoons of, of ground flax and chia uh, on your food most days. 
and most people make all the the DHA they need from that, and, uh, and we'll leave it leave it at that. I'm not a big fan of the capsules for most folks. If you're a pregnant woman, you should take these algae derived DHA capsules. If you're over 70, uh, you should uh, you can make a case for that. I'm still haven't I should, uh, still haven't gotten around to starting this starting this stuff. Um, but other than that, I, I don't know if uh, a healthy 30 year old uh, person eating a couple of tablespoons of ground flax seeds every day. I don't know if they really need to also take uh, DHA caps on top of that. And uh, it's, it has effects that have, have me concerned. We can do a whole other uh, Q&A on the DHA issue. Why don't we do, why don't we put it on the list for next time? We'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, great. But for right now, those are the, the four uh, nutrients that you want to be well, the five you count the DHA and the hemp seeds uh, that you want to pay special attention to. If you do, uh, you should be just fine. The benefits are so great, even though um, people say, well, it's a natural diet. Why do I need to supplement with, with anything? Uh, because we're not living natural lives anymore. We're not out uh, you know, with our tribe by the campfire, for, spending all day foraging and tearing up roots and tubers and uh, eating you know, raw leaves and fruit. That's what we used to do, but we're not living that life anymore. And we're living these urban lives in front of computers, etc. We have to stop kidding ourselves and using that as a rationalization. Well, I don't want to eat like that. It's unnatural. Our lives are unnatural. This is a, uh, an attempt to get back to that natural plant-based food stream that we really did evolve on. So don't let the, the, the little rough edges that have show up in uh, possible nutritional supplements throw you off the main trail of the main prize, which is your good health that comes from a plant-based food stream. That, that's where to keep the focus, not, not, not to get hung up on the, uh, the, on the supplement issues here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just know outside the beach, well, lots of people take no supplements whatsoever and they do fine. Right. And so just just know that you can sort of thrive on a plant-based diet about any of this stuff. And, yeah. and I've got some fruitarian folks don't even take the B12 supplements and they must, the bacteria in their mouths and their tongues and on the surface of the fruit with some of these folks seem to survive and suffice so they don't need anything. That said, I've seen a number of long-term vegans who've come in with, with numb fingers and toes from official B12 deficiency. It's nothing to fool around with, but it is even theory, theory, theoretically possible to get along without any supplements at all, but don't risk the B12. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.